The Warden is undoubtedly one of Minecraft's strongest mobs. And while we know he can be found in the deep dark, there's one question that we've always asked ourselves. Where does the Warden really come from? In today's video, your question is about to be answered as we enter the Warden Dimension. It's a dark and scary world full of strange Warden-like creatures. With multiple biomes to explore, this Warden Dimension is every adventurer's dream. And if you have the courage to go the extra mile and explore even further, you may just encounter the Warden Queen. A new boss that's added to the game, and make no mistake, this boss is difficult to beat. Let's take a look at this Warden Dimension, shall we? Hey you! Do you want to play mod packs? Do you want to play them with friends? Single player gets pretty lonely, huh? Then head on over to Bisect Hosting, a great place with great prices for all your server hosting needs. They support so many mod packs that I have yet to find one that they don't. Use code DOUBLESAL at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. Because hanging out with pigs, it gets pretty old. I had no idea we were going to start in the deep dark, but we can work with this. Now, one of the first things that I noticed when I spawned into this world was the beating heart noise that kept blasting into my ear. My bet was that that was the warden making that noise, so I had to be extra cautious not to set off any alarms. The warden was laying there, just paralyzed. Now that I knew I was safe, it was time to look into the chests, see if there was anything good inside. And wouldn't you know it, there was a full set of iron armor, with torches, food, and even a lore book. Now before heading into the warden dimension, I wanted to make sure that I was properly equipped, so I decided to explore the city to see if I could find any other gear that could help me. The warden was down, there was no need to worry about him, so if anything was out there, it was free for the taking. I spent a few minutes exploring and found a number of things, like this enchanted diamond hoe, and in the other chest, two sets of enchanted diamond leggings. I wrapped up my exploring and went back to the warden. After that, there was only one thing left for me to do, and that was to put him out of his misery. He dropped a warden soul, an item that was key to opening the portal. I stopped and looked around wondering whether or not I was ready for everything that was going to be on the other side. Once I activated the portal, there was only one thing left for me to do. I equipped my diamond leggings. These bad boys, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to take care of anything on the other side. I jumped into the portal and watched as everything went dark around me. Seconds later, there was a loud boom. And all of a sudden, I was in the warden dimension. This place was pitch black. If it wasn't for the RTX, then right now you'd be seeing pure darkness. I spawned on top of a castle structure and had to make my way down not knowing what I'd encounter. As soon as I got to the bottom of the stairs, I spotted something in the corner of my eye. It was obviously a warden, but this one looked different. I did my absolute best not to make any noise and I just decided to go for it. And get this, as long as I stayed crouched, he didn't even attack me. He ended up dropping this gross fleshy item called hairless meat. I then inspected this weird blob plant. I clicked it and it dropped blob jelly. There was more to explore, but sticking around in that area was not ideal because all of a sudden I was attacked by these disgusting parasite creatures. They just kept appearing out of nowhere, which led me to believe that there was a spawner nearby. Then I realized that they were coming from these weird cocoons. I went up to break them, but they were actually entities. The only way to break them was to kill them. Thank God they only took a few hits to break. After that, the parasites stopped spawning. Just when I thought I was in the clear, all of a sudden these giant spikes came out of the ground. This resembled the Evoker's fang attacks, but this had to be another type of warden. I couldn't fight back because I just didn't know where he was. The only thing left for me to do was to keep moving forward, hoping that he wouldn't follow me. But there wasn't a single corner in this map where there wasn't a creature already waiting to attack me. Once again, I spotted another monster, although this one looked a little small. This guy was bite-sized. It was a baby warden. And even though he was a baby, I just couldn't take the risk, so I had to do what I had to do. Now this next encounter startled me because all of a sudden I was being pelted by these sound waves. At this point, I was beginning to wonder whether or not I underestimated these monsters because I took a lot of damage. After recovering some of my health, I went back to investigate the creature that attacked me, and this thing was like a weird walking table. Just like the hairless warden from earlier, he seemed passive, so long as I stayed crouched. And yes, I am lagging. This is a beefy Minecraft DLC, but we did our damage eventually. After that, I got into the groove of things. I was easily killing these enemies with ease. With my newfound confidence, I felt ready to explore the rest of this dimension. The first thing I had to do was to get off this cliff. 
I felt like I was one misstep from plummeting hundreds of blocks. While running along the ledge, I spotted what looked like a staircase. At the bottom of the staircase were more hairless wardens, but the one thing that did interest me was the giant desert and the river at the other end. I carefully descended the staircase, making sure not to agitate any of the enemies. The sun was beginning to rise, so we did have a little bit of light to work with. Although I do think all the light was because of my ray tracing, so if you're playing without ray tracing, you're probably going to be seeing a pitch black area in your version. One by one, I eliminated each enemy. Then suddenly, one of them dropped an interesting item that I hadn't seen before. It was called Warden Essence, and according to the lore book, this item could be used to craft Warden Armor. If I wanted a full set of Warden Armor, then I was going to need one more essence, so we carried on. Our journey led us to this blue forest, and my god, this place was beautiful. I kept going, and then I encountered this ruined structure, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty surprised to see that this thing had generated because up until this point, there were no structures aside from where we spawned. Inside was more blob jelly and these Skulksite nuggets. As the sun began to set, I then encountered another creature, although this one was a little interesting. This guy was straight out of the Mushroom Kingdom. When I attacked him, he started doing these funny little spins. Thank god I didn't get caught in his arms because that probably would have done a lot of damage. I left the Skulk Forest and found myself in a desert, and this area was very dark because there was no Skulk to provide light. Embedded in the sand, I found what looked like a Warden Skull. I picked it up and tried to put it on, but I guess it was just a block. I then came across a secret room with the chest inside, and in the chest, something called Skulk Sight Crystals and a Grappling Hook. According to the lore book, these crystals could be used to craft tools, and in this case, we wanted a warden sword. I then tested the grappling hook only to remember the reason why I don't use these in the create mod. The next day, I started stacking blocks to reach the top of what looked like a massive bridge. On the other end of this bridge was a massive stone pillar. I had to see what was at the top, so I made my way over there. At this point, these hairless wardens were more of a nuisance than a threat. Although this one did drop our last warden essence, so now it was time to craft warden armor. All we needed were some bones and the essence itself. I'm gonna be honest, this armor did not look the way I thought it would. I thought we were gonna look more like a warden, but we resembled a skeleton. But when you look at the crafting recipe, it makes perfect sense. I only wish I was able to take off the diamond pants, but curse of binding, what are you gonna do? I kept making my way towards the top of the pillar. I was stacking blocks with the hope that I wouldn't lag and fall off. Thankfully, the danger was worth it because at the top there was a chest and inside all sorts of items. There was a skulk helmet, some blob jellies, and even a warden bow. And the amazing thing about this bow was that you didn't even need arrows. This was because this thing shot sound waves. We had warden armor, we had a warden sword, and now we had a warden bow. I think we were more than ready to take on the Warden Queen. Using my new weapon, I began to clear the enemies that were standing in our way. The Warden Queen was at the top of the staircase, and nothing was going to keep us from getting to her. When it came to the staircase that led up to the Warden Queen's lair, well, just everything about this area screamed Warden Dimension. There was Skulk everywhere. At the top of the staircase was this massive cave, and these really loud noises coming from the inside. I took care of the enemies, and I followed the noise to what looked like this weird rib cage. Now, this is just a shot in the dark, but if I had to put money on it, these were the gates to the Warden Queen herself. As I approached these bones, they opened up, revealing the entrance to the base. And at the end of the tunnel, it was the Warden Queen. All of a sudden, I was discombobulated and blasted with the powerful noise. With the help of my trusty bow, I tried to keep my distance doing damage from afar, but that didn't work so well because she started spawning all of these little minions to help her. Within seconds, I was swarmed by all these baby wardens. Thank god we had the warden sword because if we had anything else, clearing them would have been a nightmare. During the battle, I noticed that they were dropping these helmets on the ground. I put the helmet on only to realize that this was the skull of the baby warden itself. The sun began to rise and the Warden Queen was still alive. I figured that the best way to win this battle was to simply take her head on. And as you'll see in a few moments, that was an extremely terrible idea. On the bright side, I was in the arena. On the bad side, I was being chased by all these little baby wardens and these crystals, they kept healing her. I decided to just go for it and that's where I met my end. On the second attempt, I tried to keep my distance in the arena, but the bow took too long to draw. I then realized that so long as I kept my distance, the queen couldn't rebuild the crystals once I had broken them. So I took care of the crystals, went back to the entrance of the cave, and decided to pelt her from there. And slowly but surely, I began to whittle her health away. 
After many moments later and many arrows, or should I say sound waves, the Warden Queen was finally defeated. The only thing left for me to do was to take out the remaining children she left behind. With one heart left and the desire to go back to the overworld, I walked over to see what the Warden Queen had dropped. The first item she dropped was Warden Antlers. I tried to see if it was another helmet I could put on, but it was a block. The second thing she dropped was a Warden Horn. I thought if I blew through it, it would make a noise, but no, it spawned this weird Mickey Mouse looking Warden. Now, I don't know if it's supposed to look like that or if it's just a lighting glitch, but it was really funny to look at. Now, I don't know what this guy was doing to the skull, but I had to put him down because he was gonna get me demonetized. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. That was the Warden Dimension. I'll see you next time.